Hi, my name is Dr. Sarah McClay. I am a 36-year-old general practice owner in rural Queensland. I am coming to you today to explain why bulk billing is no longer viable and to also notify my community that sadly our clinic will no longer be bulk billing from the 6th of June 2022. This is a huge deal because as it stands, we currently bulk bill 90% of our patients. And this certainly wasn't how I expected it to end up. I, I opened this clinic knowing that that 90% bulk billing or anything even close to that wouldn't mean that we could pay our bills. However, when COVID occurred, uh, telehealth was introduced in order to help keep people at home and service people from home, which whilst that was absolutely revolutionary in so many ways, it also came uh, with the mandate that we had to bulk bill. And at that stage, um, our bulk billing rates just exploded. So they went from quite low, about 30%, 40% to 90%, and that's where they stayed. And there's a few reason why a few reasons for them staying there, which we'll talk about probably in another video. However, uh, this clinic, like so many others around Australia at the moment, just cannot continue to survive bulk billing at those rates. And this video is to explain why. It might be a bit long. Bear with it. Um, and to our politicians, there is a message in this for you. So please listen. This is a example and comparison of what it means to be bulk billed and to not be bulk billed. So basically think of Medicare like your insurance agent. Think of it as your subsidy. Just like when you have a, uh, when you go and have a surgery in a private hospital and a portion of it is paid by your insurance company and the portion of it is paid by you. Medicare is a bit the same. So at the moment, Medicare will pay these amounts for these various times. And I would say the most common consult that occurs would be between five and 20 minutes. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. If we just accept the Medicare rebate and don't ask you to pay a gap fee, we are accepting $39.10 for a consult that is about a normal length consult. That is putting our value in a per minute rate as $1.95 compared to $4.30, which is what we are advised to charge when considering the national advice by our Rural Australian College of General Practices. So as you can see here, uh, that means paying a gap. So that means that the patient has to actually uh, part with some money when they come to the clinic. But what does that do? What does that extra money achieve? How does that get used? So the person pays $80 at the moment, that's our fee, for a consult between five and 20 minutes, and that gets broken up. Generally, out here, uh, the doctor is gets about 70% and the clinic retains 30 and that's because the doctor is a contractor. So they're a separate entity, they're a separate business, they come in and they work with us and pay us a sum of money to help them have patients. So we pay for everything that you see when you come into the clinic except for the GP. The GP basically comes and pays us for access to all of the resources, the insurances, the, the electricity, the table, the computer systems, internets, phone, uh, all of those things, staffing is all covered by a service fee that they pay us. So they pay us a percentage of their earnings, generally around 30%. And they retain the 70%, which gets uh, broken down later into whatever they owe for tax and for super which generally is around the 30% mark of the original fee. And the leftover looks roughly like this, about $30. So you might be paying 80, but the doctor's actually left with about 32. 
When we bulk bill, this is what it looks like. We forego the $40 and we accept the subsidy that Medicare is willing to provide, which is only $39.10. If you are a concession card holder and you live in the bush, there will be an extra $11.80 that is provided to the doctor to subsidise to some degree a bit more the care. Of course, that's very different from the sum of $40. If you don't have a concession card and we bulk bill you, that amount doesn't come through. So breaking up $39.10, that leaves us with $27 to the doctor and $11.70 to the clinic. When the doctor has paid their tax, it probably looks a bit more like this. So about $15 plus or minus $5 for that consult, depending on whether or not the person was a concession card holder. If you were that doctor and you had a choice between earning $15 per consult and $32 per consult, what would you choose? What does this mean? What does it create? Well, it creates fast food medicine. If you look around Australia over the last 10 years, what you would have seen is a rise in bulk billing clinics. And bulk, bill bulk billing clinics can only afford to sustain themselves by having, first of all, generally lots of doctors, which I'll explain in a little bit. And secondly, they have high throughput of patients. So there's shorter consult lengths and faster throughput, lots, lots more people. It's very hard to do a good job in a short period of time. It's very hard to cover everything that you need to and practice safely. Out here, there hasn't been good quality healthcare in decades. So seeing someone efficiently is very hard. It is very hard to practice safe medicine in a quality way in a short period of time. To do that, you would have to bring them back over and over and over and over again. And at the moment, it's a three month wait for an appointment with me. So how can I achieve that? I can't. So I spend longer with everybody. I get what they need done and hopefully I can delay the next time they see me for a little bit longer. Now, if I am seeing people for a bit longer, my appointment lengths have to be longer, which means they're about 20 minutes each. On a good day, I see 25 people. On bad days, I see more than that and I'm stuck here till very late. I don't have lunch. And, you know, uh, it's exhausting. So if 25 people had 20 minute appointments and each paid for the fee for a five to 20 minute consult, which is $80, we would be earning $2,000 a day as the doctor. If we both build all of those people, we are literally taking half of the rate, like more. That is split up, just like I explained before, and it is the difference for the clinic of more than half. So instead of $600 at the end of the day, the clinic retains 293. Instead of $1,400 to the doctor, it's 684, which really leaves them with $391 at the end of the day for the same amount of work as if they would do if they weren't bulk billing. Yeah, depressing. <laughs> Um, so if you're looking at how the practice covers its costs, thinking now about the fact that the cost of fuel has exploded, the cost of vegetables, fruit, groceries, education, rent, property, all of those things in 10 years has gone through the roof. Those Medicare items have not indexed barely at all in over 10 years. So if we actually charge the gap, which is what we need. We need here three full-time doctors to cover the business's costs. So we need three lots of 30% at a full fee to cover the business's running overheads. And as you can imagine, you know, that's what you expect when the cost of living has increased dramatically, the cost of wages, the cost, everything has gone up. If we don't charge. If we bulk bill everybody, we need six doctors to cover our costs. Six. Have you ever seen six doctors in a tiny rural town 
like this. Clermont, have you ever seen it? No. Why? Because no one wants to earn this. No one wants to come to work and get barely anything at the end of the day and work their asses off to achieve it. People want to be paid what they're worth. And it is very hard in this environment where we have a massive rural doctor shortage to attract doctors and then say, hey, by the way, you've got to accept a 50% cut in pay and be in the middle of nowhere in the bush. Get real, that's not going to happen. So hence, we have a doctor crisis in the bush too. And as a result, not only do we not have enough doctors, we don't have enough appointments, and as a clinic, we can't pay our bills. How have I kept going for two and a half years? Well, I have paid what I earn in the clinic into the business and I have subsidised the business, which in fact is subsidising you. I have subsidised your healthcare for two and a half years and I can't keep going. Have you seen the rubbish <laughs> X-Trail that I drive, I would so desperately love a new car, but who the hell is going to give me a loan to get a new car? No one is going to give me a loan. Have you seen my house? It's much the same. I am subsidising your free health care, not the government. Morrison Albanese, hear me out. You will not have GPs left in this country in five years' time, in ten years' time. Clermont, you won't have doctors, you won't have me in six months' time if I don't do something. This clinic will be empty, it will be gone. The doctor that works with me every day won't be here either. And good luck recruiting others. In the time I have been here, we have recruited beautiful doctors. Why can't we retain them? Because it's a challenge living out here. The work is challenging. It is taxing emotionally, mentally, and it is financially taxing as a GP. We need to be paid our worth. And as a community, you need to recognise that and advocate for that so that you can have doctors. And if you want free health care, don't complain to me. Complain to your government because that is who is responsible for providing you with free health care and that who is, who is responsible for me now telling you that you must pay a gap when you come and see me. It is not up to me anymore. I cannot keep going. There is no point. It is insanity what I have done as it is. And it's time. It's time for me to make that hard decision and to put my family and, and myself and my clinic first before this community otherwise we just won't be here it's a brave thing for me to be honest and tell you this but it's the truth and other clinics all over the country are doing the same thing have a look there are plenty just like this if we can't staff our clinics in the city we certainly can't staff them in the bush. And we need solutions and we need them quickly. Thank you for your time. There will be more information to come. I will do a few more videos addressing a few of the other challenges around this issue and around specifically Clermont. Um, there will be time to ask questions. I appreciate you paying attention and um, staying with me and supporting us over the past two and a half years. Thank you guys.